This is ESBR Boxing, and I'm, I'm delighted to be joined by the WBA featherweight champion. It's Mr. Lee Wood. Lee, how are things? Good, mate. You know, um, I'm quite far ahead of where I need to be. I feel super fit. I'm ready to go, really. So these next two and a half weeks is just uh, ticking down the days, really. I've got a little bit more sparring to do, um, just a few bits and bobs, drills, etc. But um, yeah, ready to go. I'm feeling good. I'm sure you're right in the heat of heated training camp now, getting ready to taper it down, a few more sparring sessions, a few more tough ones on the track, I'm sure. Um, how did the last you know, the last few weeks look like for you? Yes, yeah, so I've got a little bit of sparring left. I'm picking some up from the airport tonight, actually. I've uh, got a week, a week and a bit of sparring. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm ahead of um, where I need to be. I'm super fit. Maybe because I've had so much time, you know, with the fight getting cancelled last time, preparation's kind of just been everlasting since last like September I was supposed to fight. So, um, Obviously, it was always going to be the same opponent, so preparing, preparing, preparing for the same person. It feels like I've had a really good camp. As you, you mentioned there, obviously, about it, September, you were due to fight um, Rachel Lara last. Um, has it been a frustrating period for you? Because it's coming up nearly now. By the time you fight, it'll be nearly a year um, since you've been out of the ring. I'm sure you would have, in an ideal world, wanted to fight more often than that. Yeah, you know... I consider myself to be more of a throwback fighter. I'd love to be busy. I'd love to box three or four times at least. Um, after my defence, not only to Mick, um, the WBA didn't, wasn't, wasn't quite sure what the WBA wanted me to do. thought the Leo Santa Cruz fight was going to be there, then it wasn't, then it was, and then he let me defend, and then I was picked up my injury. So um, it was frustrating, but you know, I've been through more frustrating times in my career, not getting fights and not having any money. Um, Loads of things going off at the time, moving club, moving gyms, management, and you now I'm in actually a good position now. Even though the fight didn't come off, and I had to wait a long time before that, you know, kind of knew eventually that things get sorted in just a matter of time. The injury wasn't too bad; just the timing of it, right before the fight, very close to the fight. Um, it would have meant I, had to, I would have had to have about three weeks of no punching, and you know, forward title fight, just one possible. You mentioned there, obviously, it was literally just. What a week or so before, before you were a little bit more. A near, just, week or two before you were meant to fight. Obviously, yeah. you got that. Uh, you got that injury. Weeks. Yeah, um, about three weeks out, but um, I tried to persevere. You know, I tried to spar. Uh, I rested it for three days. Tried to spar, and then I think three round the first three rounds. Oh, it feels all right. And then round four, and they go round five, and by round seven, eight, I couldn't hold my arm up. So, um, like I said, I tried to persevere, but I just couldn't do it. Does that not just show you as well? Obviously, you were you were kind of willing. You were almost almost wanting to go into the fight, knowing that you'd had a little bit of an injury. You know, say it had have been, say you had have gone in with a niggle, um, um, a little bit of a niggle like that, just shows you kind of your character as a as a fighter as well. You just you just want the fights. Most fighters, I think, like everyone picks up niggles in camps. Um, the Colin fight, I had the operation on my shoulder in the October, and I boxed in March, and it was nowhere near enough. Um, that whole camp, my shoulder was hurting me. I was just like, when I was sparring, I was fine because the adrenaline and that, but like when it was pads and bags and it was really annoying me. It was like a pain. It was constant. Um, and even after the fight, when I went back to training as well. So yeah, but um, everyone picks up niggles, little bits and bobs. You just crack on, but um, you have to draw the line when you've got one arm, you know, um, and that's what I had to do. As the fact that this fight then has been made at a later date, obviously um, more time, you've had more time to concentrate. On Maurizio Lara, you, you said there at the start that you kind of knew it was always going to be the same opponent. Um, has, does you know has that helped you in a way? Almost prepare more. Yeah, obviously I feel a lot more prepared than I did the stage I was at last time. A similar stage to now. Um, I feel a lot more confident in what I'm doing. I've had more examples of what I need to do against sparring partners. Um, yeah, it's probably like a, it does sound like cliche, but you know. Everything for a reason and all that. Um, I'm in a lot better place. So. Happy days. Yeah, as I mentioned, obviously you're fighting Maurizio Lara on February 18th, back in your in your hometown again, as well. Top of the bill and um, defending your WBA super title now. I suppose it is, isn't it? Now that you were upgraded. So well done so, yeah. for that. Thank you. Happy days. <laughs> Finally. Um, Finally. But yeah, <laughs> what do you, what do you, you know? What do you make of um, Lara as an opponent now? What does he bring to the table? Um, he's very good at what he does, especially if you give him opportunities to do that. Uh, Warrington 
for example, gave him a lot of opportunities to do what he's good at. Um, he's dangerous, um, he's hot headed, he's ballsy, he can punch. Um, he doesn't really weigh up risk very well. He takes a lot of risk um, to get his shots off. At the same time, in a lot of cases, you know, people's best um, things where they get success from are normally the biggest weaknesses as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's I'm obviously really well. Away. I'm trying not to give too much away, you know, but um, yeah, you know, he's, he can be quite reckless and that would be his undoing. Yeah, I think I think I completely agree. Even, you know, from watching his fights, obviously he was relatively unknown until he came over and fought Josh Warrington and that was a destructive performance. And then since then, he's been quite well known on British British shores. He does seem to have a big punch, as you mentioned. A lot of people would put him up there as one of the biggest punchers in the division. Um, obviously, you're not going to give your game plan away and stuff, as he just mentioned. But, you know, people think that here, like, either way this goes, Lee Wood's going to win by knockout or Maurizio Lara's going to win by knockout. How do you make sure it's you winning that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, basically down to the little things, the things we've been drilling. You know, we watch a lot of video footage with my team analyse and go over for hours and hours of footage to dumb it down pretty much for me to give me the simplest form of saying, right, you need to do this, you need to do this to prevent this, and you do this to make this occur. And when this occurs, you do this. Pretty much to the bottom of it. Um, that's how I work down here. It's worked my numerous, my last three fights. And that's where I've had most most success in my whole career and much higher level. Um, so, yeah, it's just basically doing them things and um, trying not to say too much. But, you know, sometimes in fights, like you just said, it's going to be a win by one way of your by knockout. I totally agree. I think uh, this doesn't go past the halfway mark um, and see myself being victorious. But, you know, we prepare for 12 rounds. And sometimes in fights where you think, you're pretty much certain of an outcome. It can be completely split on its head in the opposite. It could be a points victory. You never know. But um, I know what I need to do and I'm confident in doing it. Happy days. Just you mentioned in there, you mentioned the three your last three fights. Going back even further than that, since you know May 2019, let's say, you fought the likes of Ryan Doyle, David Oliver Joyce, Jazza, um, Reese Mould, Kanzu, and of course Conlon. And now you're in against and someone, you know, a top five top 10 featherweight in the world does it show that you're willing just to step up to the plate and test yourself against the best time and time again yeah that's what I want to do that's why I picked to fight Mr. Lara it's not my mandatory um, I want to test myself I want to test myself with who the public deem to be the most dangerous the best fighters because um, like I said before I probably got what two or three years left maximum of boxing Um and I don't want to look back and be like, didn't really need that fight. That was in, that was an easy fight. I want to keep that momentum on the spin. You know, world title fight, underdog expect to lose. Defense, underdog expect to lose. Again, defense, underdog expect to lo to lose. You know, and when you keep picking up these victories, you know, it, it's great from our for the history kind of say, we could say um, of the market I'm going to leave. And I look back and go, Do you know what? I didn't avoid anybody. I didn't avoid no one. I, I literally ran, ran at them challenges to test myself. And to be honest with myself, how good am I? And that's answers and questions, getting them wins. Yeah, I think absolutely, absolutely. The, your mentality there is <laughs> commendable. Um, you're on a three-fight winning streak with by knockout, of course. Um, what's been the secret to this? I think I think it's fair to say that, you know, you, you would be widely regarded as one of the biggest punters in the world, the featherweight now, for sure. Yeah, um, I can crack definitely, but um, can't just come out trying to knock people out. There's a lot more to boxing, and until I came down here with Ben Davison, I didn't really, I didn't really know how much there was to learn about boxing. I thought I have ten years at a pro gym, that had world champions, many British champions, many world champions. I thought you know, I pretty much knew, knew quite a bit, but. Um, the old saying, you know, you're never done learning. That was the case down here. I come down here on how they view boxing and how they break things down. It's just completely spun boxing on its head. And now I feel like I'm, I'm back in year one, you know. <laughs> but um, no, it's good to keep learning. Um, and like you said, the recent success is down to my team. I wouldn't have won them fights. <clears throat> the British title fight, I may have got through. It would have been a 50-50. I may have won, may have not. 
<clears throat> there's no way <clears throat> I'd have won the Zukan fight. No chance. I would have done the wrong things. I would have blew myself out, blew a gasket, and probably ended up finishing very badly. And, and same with the Colin fight. You know, I wouldn't have won that fight either. So, yeah, I've got a lot of confidence in my team. A lot, got a com- lot more confidence in myself and knowing what I need to do, approaching these big fights and going through the same routine. Every fight now, I'm levelling up because I'm implementing what I practice and approaching the fights the same way. And every time it works, you know, you get more and more, uh, probably better at the routine of doing it. And that's fascinating. Obviously, you mentioned there your team and Ben Davison. I believe this is your, going to be your fourth fight with Ben. Um, what do you feel like, you know, Ben and his team have added to your game, perhaps, that you didn't have in your arsenal before? <clears throat> Someone looking at me and saying, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that. You need more of this. You need more of that. When this happens, you need to do this. When this situation arises, you need to do this. And it's only little things like the Reese Mould fight, <clears throat> for example, this is just one thing. Um, we practised. There might be a spell in that fight when I'm approaching the ropes or I get caught with a shot and I'm getting backed up. Um, and I drilled and drilled and drilled a little sequence just to keep me safe. Um, and then the fight happened and I ended up in a bad position and he was pressing and I was near the ropes and I did this thing that I drilled and it totally got me out of trouble changed the, the, the dynamics I walked back around got centre of the ring and then about 30 seconds later was when um, I unpoured and, and put him down but the old me would have been backing up I might have tried to swing like the Dickens fight on the ropes trying to throw shots and got tagged and end up for a massive shaking minute flying around the ring um, but like Ben always says you don't know what you don't know and making these decisions where and when to make these right decisions is what makes you a world class fighter you know your decision making and you, you you learn about your decision making by making the right decisions in the gym and practicing these scenarios you could say that's fascinating stuff it, it, it really is um, going back to this fight now um, <laughs> as you mentioned there you're talking about defences and stuff and it comes as no surprise to you that you are the betting underdog again I'm sure you. I'm sure you're used to that by now. Um, it doesn't. So it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything to you. Do you almost prefer it in a way being the slight underdog? Yeah, you know, I never look at the book as odds because all it is is the public, what the public think, and um, sometimes what some of the majority of the public think is totally wrong. You know, um, that's that's all betting is. That's all odds is. You know, it's, it's they swing the odds depending on what everyone's betting on. Um, the Zukan fight, you know, people were tweeting saying I was going to get my head used as a speedball. Um, the Conlon fight, you know, people were saying they haven't got, they, haven't, they can't even see I'm going to win this fight against someone so skillful. And, you know, it's just one of them. I kind of used to it. I kind of thrive off it a little bit. You know, I always retweet things and, and share things on Facebook when people say stuff. And I think, oh, do you know what? After the fight, I'll come back to that. I see it in it. Like, it, it, it buzzes me a bit. Like, I'll come back to that one. I like that one. I'll come back to that. And then, you know, after a fight, you know, I never do because, you know, just wins enough when there's enough. But, um, it's a nice to add fuel to the fire, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, you know, you're, you're a title holder at Featherweight. It's, it's a pretty stacked division, um, not just even domestically, but world, worldwide, of course, as well. Um, you've got yourself, Ray Vargas, you know, Figueroa, Maxeo, Lopez, um, Lara, obviously. Even then, obviously Isaac Dogby as well. Now, Warrington, Condon, there are, there are so many... Um, good fighters at featherweight. Where do you see yourself in that whole mix? Do you see yourself the best of the lot? Um, there's some hard fights, but yeah, I want to prove to be number one, prove myself to be number one. I'm just going to do that by keep winning these fights, keep um, taking them off one by one. Um, stylistically, you know, I'll probably beat, for me, stylistically the hardest fight. Um, makes a great fight, I'm a great boxer. Um, there's some good fights out there, some hard fights, but the fights that I know I can come through, and hopefully fight by fight now, I'll prove myself and, and we'll come back to this interview and, you know, say, do you know what? It was right. Is that what you want now then? Obviously, you mentioned earlier, you said, you know, two or three years. Um, from now on, it, it's those names I mentioned. It's, you know, it's those fights or, or nothing really. You just want those those big fights from now until the end of your career. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, for sure. I've uh, said that a few times to recent interviews. Um, after this fight, all being well, I'm not looking past him. I'm not overlooking him. Um, my eyes are firmly set on Marissa Lara, but I'm confident coming through it. Um, 
there's three things I wanted to achieve in my career. And I said this a few years ago, before I won the British title even. People would have thought I was mad when I said it. And I said, you know, these are the three things I want to do. And it's win the British title, box one, hopefully win a world title, and be the first person to headline at the city ground. I'm going to win this fight and then I'm going to headline at the city ground. Then after that, you know, well, even for that, I'm not really concerned who's in the corner, whether Warrington would be a big fight that would sell. Um, the corner rematch would be massive. Hopefully he could pick up a world title. <clears throat> and they get the rematch on, that would be huge. Um, or there's Lopez. There's, there's, I've got so many options, you know. But I need to win this fight first, which I'm confident doing. Absolutely um, brilliant. Yeah. And after, that, yeah and, I, and after that, you know, we can, we can start looking at the names. I'm sure people would have thought you were mad when you said that before you'd won the British title. Yeah. It's on it's on my Instagram. Um, I shared it when I did the interview with him, and probably probably a lot of people thought that's never going to happen. Now I'm one thing away, you know. So um, yeah, you know, and I'm confident in getting it done. Obviously, you, as uh, and I know just by talking to you, you're not overlooking Bruce Larry in the slightest. But you mentioned there fighting at the city ground. I was going to ask you about that next. I was going to say, is that the ultimate goal this year? Um, hopefully. Big summer fight, even as you mentioned, there potentially an all British fight against someone like Josh Warrington. You know, he brings the Leeds crowd yeah. to Nottingham. That would be an absolutely, you know, enormous fight. Yeah, I think that's still um, a massive fight for the the stadium. Um, Conlon rematch as well. I've I've heard rumours is fighting for the world title. I'm not sure if it's if it's going to happen. I don't. You know, you never know. Just rumours at the minute. But um, if he can pick that up, that would be a massive fight. The Lopez fight, if he doesn't, is a massive fight. So I've got options, but I think the Warrington fight with the the football and both being in the Premier League, you know, I think that is the the, the juiciest one for the fans, um, and that would probably be the best atmosphere as well. Yeah, absolutely. I for one would love to see <laughs> love to see that fight. Um, now, um, just at the time of filming this, obviously we're about two and a half weeks, as we mentioned at the beginning of the interview, away from fight night. You mentioned you've got a few spars left. It's just a matter of doing those spars, strength and conditioning, getting that all done, and then you know, last week or so, just making the weight. Yeah, for sure. Um, bringing my weight down slowly. The last few spars, practicing the things I've been working on. Uh, them, especially the individual moments, like I was saying. Um, yeah, just keeping my fitness. I'm super fit, so maintaining that whilst I spar. Um. I think this next week and off always drags a little bit, but then when we're going to fight week, it literally flies. You know, you've got the, the open workout, the press conference, the way in. Being back in my own city, which I love because I'm down in Essex at the minute. Yeah, just being back in my own city around my friends and my family here and there. I'm in the hotel, obviously, because it's fight week, but, you know, I get to see a few more people here and there. Um, I get to see my kids next weekend. I haven't seen them for three weeks, so that's going to be good as well. I'm just looking, really looking forward to it. And, you know, like I said, that fight week goes the fastest. And then before you know it, Walking out to Monaco and Tile, um, we'd be probably a sellout by then, 9,000. And honestly, I can't wait. Yeah, sounds brilliant. Um, I know the last time we spoke, um, you mentioned that you weren't, a, you know, you're not particularly a huge fan of all the, the build up and the talking and stuff. Um, is, is that still the case? Is it just a matter of, right, get the fight night and get in there and beat the crap out of somebody? Yeah, the press conference day, I used to dread that. It's like, oh, I have to do all this. Like, I didn't get into boxing for this. Um, but slowly, you know, you get more experience. The more you do, the better you get. Um, talking's never been my, my, my strong point, but, you know, bit by bit, hopefully I'm getting a little bit better. I don't dread it as much anymore. I try to enjoy it and try to get the crowd involved as well, like I did at um, the Conlon Press Conference. So hopefully I'll have a few things we can do, let people enjoy it and enjoy it myself. Fantastic, Lee. Obviously, yeah, I need to ask as well, because I know you're a Forest fan. What do you make your season so far? Are you happy enough? Do you think you'll be comfortably staying up? Yeah, we've got a lot of injuries at the minute. I think, I think we've got six um, really key players. You know, Morgan Gibbs White, um, Keeper, not a good one. I think Yates as well. So um, it's not it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good, Biff. But um, yeah, I mean, if we can sort them out, we've got a few new signs in this window, I think. Um, yeah, I think we can stay up. Obviously, down to these injuries, how long they last and that, but I think I think we'll stay up. We'll keep the form we have at home, really good form. Beating Liverpool, joining it's Chelsea, you know, had some good wins. Um, we've got Man U tonight in the second leg of the Cup. We're not bothered about the Cup. We're just focusing on the league, but what happens, happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we'll stay up. Um, 
We've got a hard game on my fight day, Man City at home. Never going to be an easy game. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, I think we'll stay up. We're doing all right mid table. So yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, I'm a, believe it or not, I'm a Rotherham United fan, despite being from Belfast. So I said yeah. that as well. When we got knocked out of the FA Cup, it was just like, oh, yeah, we're concentrating on staying up. So <laughs> I, I agree with you. It was up and down, wasn't it, Rotherham, in the, champ- in the Championship in the League One? Where are you now? Yeah. Yeah, we're in the Championship at the minute. But last six yeah, seasons, yeah, we've had. Yeah, we've, we're doing all right. We're doing okay at the minute. We've had three promotions and three relegations in the last six seasons. So. We're, we're we're the Norwich of the divisions below, up and down, up and down. But hopefully we can stay up this year. The Norwich. They're doing it for the money, aren't they? <laughs> You're right. Um, yeah, where where are you in the championship? Twentieth now, but we've just we're we've been our last. We went on like ten games, losing all of them there. But we've won our last two games. Um, so we're we're I'm we've made some good signings in the window. So I'm more confident than I was two weeks ago. To That's to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, please so, there. keep that momentum, yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, just finally, Lee, I really appreciate um you giving me your time here tonight. Um, you said in the build up to the Conlon fight that if he was still standing in the twelfth round, you'd knock him out. Um, so you seem you seem to be a man for a prediction. Um, so what's your prediction for your fight against Maurizio Lara on Saturday, eighteenth of February? I honestly, I can't see it going past the halfway mark, around six or seven. I think. Um... It'll be too um, too reckless and um, without giving too much away, you know, I'm not going to come out and skirt around and run for my life. I'm going to come out and meet him in the middle of the ring and um, I've told him this and um, hopefully he comes out and meets me in the middle of the ring and, and uh, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. I mean, I can't wait for it, Liam. I'm excited to, I'm excited to watch him. Yeah, hopefully hopefully it's another, it's another knockout win for yourself. Listen, I really appreciate your time. Lee, uh, thanks very much. Look at me. I'll talk to you soon, yeah?